control is an important application of embedded computing systems. Even if the control algorithm is executed in software, the controller still needs an interface to talk to the plant. Let's review the basics of feedback control. Feedback control, or closed loop control, is a fundamental technique in engineering. The plant is the physical system we want to control. The controller is a filter that provides the input necessary to cause the plant to do what we want. The term feedback comes from this part of the block diagram. We take the plant's output and compare it to the desired input. We use that as the input to the controller. It uses this error signal to determine what control to send to the plant in order to change its output to what we want. There are several types of specifications we use for control systems. Rise time is the time from the initial input command to the plant reaching the specified value. Of course, this depends upon what range of acceptable outputs we're willing to take. Typically, coming within 90% of the specified value is sufficient, but you can set other limits. Overshoot is the maximum value of the response. So in some types of control systems, the output will go over the required value and then settle in. Overshoot measures that maximum value. Settling time is the time from providing the command input to all of the plant outputs being within a certain range. Once again, 1% is a typical range, but you can choose other values in order to determine settling time of your system. Let's fill in a few more details of our control system. For our physical plant, we'll use a typical second order system. This has two poles. All we need to say about the controller right now is that its transfer function is named K. When we plug these two together into the block diagram, we come up with the transfer function for the complete closed loop system, which we call H. And you can see that it's a function of both the physical plant and of the controller. We didn't yet specify the control law. There are several types of control laws we can use, but a common form is known as PID control. Proportional, derivative, and integral. In a continuous version, a PID control function looks something like this, which we can write in the S domain as this. We can also create a discrete version, and this version uh, differentiates on the control output, which has some advantages. So here's a block diagram in which we have a single one-pole physical plant, and we have a PID controller. We can plug in the formula for the PID control, the formula for the physical plant, and come up with the transfer function for the complete system. And as we saw before, the form of that function looks like this. To summarize, closed loop control generates a command for the plant by comparing the actual output with the desired output. PID, or proportional integral derivative control, is widely used because it combines accuracy and responsiveness.